Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about the first thing in my Camera Basics playlist, Aperture. So what is it and how does it affect your image? Let's get into it. So first of all, what is Aperture? Well, the simplest way to describe it is literally the opening in your lens that allows light to pass through to the sensor. So there are two ways that you can control your aperture, and it depends what kind of lens you own. If you have an all manual lens like this one that has no connections to the camera, everything is controlled manually on the lens itself. This lens has an aperture ring along the top that I twist in either direction to control the opening or closing of the aperture. This lens here has connections to the camera. So the camera itself controls the aperture of the lens. So all cameras will have dials either on the top or the back, and you can actually program which dial you want to control shutter speed, which dial you want to control aperture. So for me on this camera, this top dial here controls the aperture, the back dial controls the shutter speed. So before I go any further and give you any examples, it's important to understand a term called f-stop because what that does, it actually assigns numerical value to the aperture. For example, this aperture can go all the way from f1.7 to f22. Now you may think, the bigger the opening for the aperture, the bigger the number. Actually the opposite, as confusing as that is. If you have a really big opening that's letting a lot of light to the sensor, that would actually be a really low f-stop value. And if you close the aperture down so it's just a small little hole and only a little bit of light is getting to the sensor, that would actually be a high f-stop value. So for this lens, f1.7 is the lowest number I can change it to, and f22 is the highest number. On this lens here, f2.8 is the lowest number. Now to show you what happens when I change the aperture value, thanks to technology, I can actually control the aperture on the camera that I'm shooting right now with my phone. Currently, I have that aperture set to 2.8. If I start to slowly change, 3.2, 3.5, 4. Let's go all the way to f20. You can see how much darker the image got because there is virtually no light getting to the sensor. If I go to f22, I'm pretty much talking to you from within a cave right now. Now if I change back to say f9, you can start to see the light coming back into the image. Now to f3.2, and we're pretty much back to where we started, and then quickly back to f2.8. But the amount of light that gets to your center isn't actually the only thing that aperture controls. Another key thing that is influenced by your aperture setting is your depth of field. Now depth of field is a little bit more complicated than that because it also gets greatly impacted by your focal length, but I'll talk about focal length in a later video. For today, it's just good to understand that the aperture controls your depth of field as well as the light getting to your sensor. And how does it do this? Well, if you were to shoot at say 1.7, you would have a very shallow depth of field, meaning that if you were shooting a subject, your subject would be in focus, the background would be completely out of focus. If you change your aperture setting to say f22, well now pretty much everything in your scene, foreground, middle ground, background, is all gonna be in focus. So the higher aperture value, the more in focus, the lower aperture value, the less in focus, and the more of that blurry background you'll get, which is typically used in portraits and things like that. So that's Aperture Basics 101. Next time I'm gonna be talking about something else that works in tandem with Aperture to control what your final image looks like, and that's shutter speed. So I'll see you next time.